Walking with Dinosaurs 3D is the most disappointing thing since Primeval Season 5. It's also one of the most requested movies for me to review, to the point where even the automatic YouTube search bar suggestions expected me to do it. So, to celebrate Walking with Dinosaurs 20th anniversary, I am reviewing the movie that tarnished its legacy. Oh, and if you want a review about the actual documentary, there are plenty of other YouTubers explaining what makes it so great. Or you can just watch the first two minutes of my previous video. The development of the Walking with Dinosaurs movie is the tragedy of one man named Pierre de l'Espoir. Back in the early 2000s, Pierre had an animation studio called Meteor Studios, or Evergreen Films, I'm not sure at which point names changed. Anyway, point is they produced all your favorite American dinosaur documentaries, like When Dinosaurs Roamed America, Dinosaur Planet, and Valley of the T-Rex. Okay, maybe ignore that last one. They also worked on movies like 300, Fantastic Four and Journey to the Center of the Earth. Meteor Studios actually went bankrupt after Journey to the Center of the Earth because the Hollywood cunts in charge did not pay the animation studio that did all the hard work. In 2011, Pierre teamed up with BBC Earth to make a feature film based on walking with dinosaurs. He wanted to make a nature movie about voiceless, realistic looking dinosaurs with the help of paleontology experts like Mark Witten and David Krentz. And the end result looks absolutely breathtaking. Scott Sampson called it the next quantum leap in dinosaur movies. Sure, they had to make the dinosaur eyes a bit bigger and cartoony, but that's just so you can better tell the emotions. And it's not as cartoony as this Roblox looking motherfucker. They're more expressive than the animals from Disney's Lion King remake. Long live the king! Ah! Oh no! But then the boomer executives at 20th Century Fox fucked everything up. Because they thought that dinosaurs only appealed to little children, they replaced Pierre and hired celebrity voice to deliver the dumbest, most uninspired, jokey dialogue I have ever heard. All that beautiful animation, completely ruined by voiceover that, thanks to the dinosaurs not moving their lips, feels like you're watching a bad YouTube poop video. But what about my fair share? Your fair share was delicious. Ow, ow, hey, watch the nose! You watch it! You watch it! No, you watch it! Whatever happens, we have to remain calm. Remember, they can smell fear. Oh, sorry, that's not fear. Juniper, are you okay? I think I just stepped in some fear. If I pointed out every single stupid line, this would be a two-hour commentary track. So let's not do that. Also, before any of you write a comment about how annoying my voice is, let me point out that you are watching a YouTube video on my YouTube channel edited by me. If you didn't like my annoying voice talking over scenes of Speckles the Tarbosaurus, watch the actual movie. My voice is not attached to the movie itself. But in the case of Walking with Dinosaurs 3D, the annoying voiceover is a part of the actual movie. As a result, it was a box office disappointment. Being released shortly after Disney's Frozen probably didn't help. And Evergreen Studios turned into Deciduous Studios. As in, they went bankrupt again. Note that Fox didn't produce the movie, they only distributed it. So essentially, they completely destroyed something that wasn't even their own. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it well? So now that we have established why I hate this movie for its backstory alone, let's just head right into it. And before any of you complain about piracy, I paid for this movie. Six years ago when I actually bought a ticket to watch this in the cinema. Evergreen is bankrupt. Fox is part of Disney. Which ironically means Disney now owns every dinosaur movie with CGI dinosaurs in a realistic environment. None of the people who had anything to do with the original vision are going to profit even a cent of this in 2019. The original Walking with Dinosaurs documentary had that grand orchestral opening with that beautiful sunrise. Let's see how this movie starts. Well, you can't get further away from the original score than that. 
The movie opens with a boy who I can only assume reflects the opinions of the executive producers. They roamed the earth millions of years ago and then they got wiped out. Their only living descendants are birds and blah blah blah. Oh, I'm not really into digging up dead things. His opinions change when the crow from the opening of Jurassic World shows up and starts talking to him, because this kid took some LSD before going on this trip. But you know that every fossil tells a story, and this tooth rally tells a pretty good one. <laughs> and try to keep up, will you? And the kid is gone. This is the laziest, most bare bones framing device for a movie ever. At first, I couldn't even tell that we are now in the late Cretaceous because they're using the same Alaskan scenery we see in modern day. So as nice as the cinematography is, the vast grassy plains are a Cretaceous no-go. Our narrator is an Alex Zornis named Alex, a prehistoric bird from Mexico, who flew all the way up to Alaska to escape from his country. You gotta feel sorry for his voice actor, John Leguizamo, when a lot of Alex lines is just this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross! Mmm, but tasty! Mm. If the goal was to make him as annoying as possible, then congrats, you succeeded. Another annoying thing about this movie is that whenever a new dinosaur shows up, the movie literally pauses, displays the name of the dinosaur and has a little kid read out the dinosaur's name. In case you forgot how little confidence the executives had in their target audience. That's me, Alex. Alex Ornis, meaning Alexander's bird. Insectivore. She's a Pachyrhinosaurus. Pachyrhinosaurus, meaning thick-nosed lizard. Herbivore. This is the kind of editing that ruins Suicide Squad. <laughs> Truodon, meaning wounding tooth. Omnivore. Dubious genus name that shouldn't be used anymore. Looks like its eyes are gonna pop out if you squeeze it. Our protagonist is a baby Pachyrhinosaurus named Patch. His name is Patch. I'm sorry, I meant Patch. -y. He constantly fights with his bigger brother Scowler, the living embodiment of the Virgin vs. Chad meme. <laughs> what a Good thing my dad showed up. That's bulldust. Patchy 6000 pound papa. Mufasa, meaning parent figure that's gonna die in the first act. Becomes the war. Thank you! Oof. Oh, leaving the nest was totally worth it. Hey, what's going on up there? That's, ah. Nothing better than seeing your hero literally get shit on. This might be the best analogy of how this movie treats the original Walking with Dinosaurs documentary. Also, keep in mind Patchy has a fresh bleeding wound in his head. He's totally gonna die of an infection. Whoa. Ankylosaur, meaning fused lizard, herbivore. It's weird that they're calling it an ankylosaur and not the more specific genus like Edmontonia or Panoplosaurus. Because I'm not sure a young kid would understand the difference between ankylosaur and ankylosaurus. I've encountered plenty of people like that. Oddly enough, much of the dinosaurs also has an Edmontonia that the narrator just calls an ankylosaur. Oh wait, fuck, I completely forgot to mention March of the Dinosaurs. Alright, so March of the Dinosaurs is a documentary from 2011, showing the migration of late Cretaceous Alaskan dinosaurs, just like this one. Thus, they both feature more or less the same animals. The only difference is that March of the Dinosaurs protagonist is an Edmontosaurus, instead of a Pachyrhinosaurus. Also, the Gorgosaurus in March of the Dinosaurs was feathered, unlike the one in Walking with Dinosaurs 3D. Keep in mind the feathered fossil of Eutyrannus wasn't even discovered yet at that point. So much of the dinosaurs just took a well-educated guess. Both are now outdated anyway, because the Alaskan Gorgosaurus turned out to be a smaller, different looking Tyrannosaurus, now named Nanooksaurus. And according to a new paper, the Alaskan Edmontosaurus is a separate genus called Ugrunaluk. No, wait, according to a newer paper, Ugrunaluk is back in the genus Edmontosaurus. Okay, you know what? I will continue to use the names they use in this movie so everyone understands which animals of this movie I am talking about. This is Edmontosaurus. This is Gorgosaurus. This is Troodon. Those are Triceratops. Ten minutes in, we get our look at how amazing dinosaurs are shot. At least they knew not to wait until halfway into the movie. Ah, they were jealous, Pachi, because you've been out in the world. You were on your way to becoming a grown-up. 
Don't you even start with fucking pop songs. There's only one form of songs acceptable to play over dinosaur footage and it's this. No, this movie has much better music choices, like playing sexy music while you're watching a female baby dinosaur. And it all started the day I met Juniper. Because back when I joked about Ceratopsy and Lolis, I was just making shit up without any context, but now the movie is doing it for me. Hi, I'm Patchy. I'm made of meat. Oh. Woohoo! Yeah! She likes me! And she likes my whole. Turns out she's really into pegging. What do you think those horns are for? Speaking of horns, I love how they managed to give every pecky rhinosaurus individual in this movie their own distinct look. It's just unfortunate that these models are based on the Canadian species Pachyrhinosaurus lacustae, while the actual Alaskan species Pachyrhinosaurus perotorum turned out to have a different horn configuration. The birds are going south, those green things are going south. These green things are Paxosaurus, by the way. I'm telling you that because these small ornithopods are apparently so insignificant that they're the only ones to never get their names displayed. But the fucking possum does! A forest fire breaks out and because that alone isn't enough of a threat, the Gorgosaurs attack. Dad! Let me do it, I'm louder. Dad! Wait a minute, Scholar, I think I see him. Dad! We should split up, he'll only eat one of us. The slower one, right? Dad, second thought, we better stick together. Do I even need to point out how much these stupid jokes ruin what is supposed to be a serious moment? Dad! Like wow. I can't fucking believe I'm about to say something positive about the voice acting in Speckles the Tarbosaurus, but at least that movie knew in which situations to not crack a joke. The young dinosaurs hide from the big predator in the underbrush, because now they're ripping off everyone's favorite dinosaur movie, Super Gator. Bulldust the great Pachyrhinosaur, the most feared and respected of his tribe, have met his match. Major! Oh, Major, I'm so happy to see you. It was crazy. There was this fire, and then these mean psycho gorgos came out of nowhere, but Dad fought him off, and now he's gone, and... Oh, okay. Patchy sounds pretty alright for a kid who just watched his dad die and getting eaten right in front of his eyes. What is that noise? Wait, is that me? Is my head whistling? Well, this poor kid will be doomed to have tinnitus for the rest of his life. No, oh, yeah, just whistling out of my hole. Shouldn't you ask her mom for permission? I don't need to get permission from her mom. Patchy! Unless, of course, she's standing right behind me, which... Bye, Patchy. Worst migration ever. Man, being embarrassed in front of my crush sucks. This is almost as bad as last night when my dad died. Now we get a proper introduction to Gorgon, the Gorgosaurus, a worthy new entry in the pantheon of named Tyrannosaur characters. Even without any feathers, I have to say that this is the most gorgeous Gorgosaurus I have ever seen in any media ever. I love the iridescent blue and the stripe on its face, which of course means that years later some stupid mobile game had to rip it off. Like the close-ups in When Dinosaurs Romped America, we get to see his model from all angles. Really all angles. Even ones apparently directed by Quentin Tarantino. In two tiny little arms, he... <laughs> I'm sorry, seriously, I mean, what's up with that? Wow, it's like the writers realized what they were doing was too educational, so they had to dump it down for the kids. This is what educational YouTube videos in 2020 will look like if you want to mark them as kid-friendly. Ironically, this scene does bring up a good point. Why are Jurassic Park fanboys always whining that Tyrannosaurus with feathers look stupid and ridiculous when their tiny arms have already been the target of ridicule for almost a century? Nature really fucked us. Can't even jerk off. Also, good job of turning the Gorgosaurus into a joke after we've already seen him kill Patchy's dad. I'm sorry, I can't take him seriously with those tiny little baby hands. If the voiceovers don't take these predators seriously, why should I do that? Whatever happens, we have to remain calm. Remember, they can smell fear. Uh, sorry, that's not fear. Juniper, are you okay? I think I just stepped in some fear. I think what you actually wanted to say was, I just stepped in some walking with dinosaurs 3D. Oh, whoa, whoa. Somebody help! 
any help? I had to dive in to save her. Ah! You dove in? That's right. Maybe we should look at that again. Yes, they're actually playing back the footage. When was the last time you've seen a rewind joke outside of a stupid YouTube video? Ah yes, the mighty Edmontosaur. Enormous in length, gargantuan in height. At least we finally get hadrosaurs in a movie where they are not presented as just tyrannosaur fodder, but as giant majestic animals. If you want to know where the food is, follow the fat guys. Okay, forget what I just said. Are you alright? What's wrong with your leg? Oh, it's just a scratch. Patchy, you should go on ahead. I'll catch up. What are you, crazy? I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna stay with you until you feel better. I am such a desperate, I mean, nice guy. Okay, yeah, I can get us out of here. Time to turn on my trailblazing skills. Hey, Patchy, have you ever had that weird dream where a bunch of crabs are crawling all over you? No, you know, I've had the lobster dream. Oh. Well, you gotta fight memes with memes. It's okay, they don't want us, the crabs! Come on, this was the perfect chance to showcase these giant pterosaurs hunting small dinosaurs instead of going for the seafood and they missed it. Kairos to Nodi! Kairos to Nachos? Nodi! Oh, what kind of a name is that? A long one? You know, the writers are really scraping the bottom of the barrel when their joke rapper tries, Tyrannosaur arms are tiny. Let's watch that scene again. And scientific names are hard to pronounce. These attempts at humor are even more desperate than Patchy trying to impress his crush. Kairos Tinodis isn't even that difficult. Have you seen new dinosaur names nowadays? They flee from the pharopods and run right into Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country. Ah, uh, you get the rest. As pretty as the Northern Lights are, I wish they didn't play this sappy song over them. But composing an emotional original soundtrack is hard work, so let's not do that. Patchy is a big boy now, and Alex completely fits inside his hole. Um, that might not have been the best way to phrase that. Honestly, I love Patchy's design as a grown up, and how you can see that the opening caused half of his frill to grow completely deformed. Unfortunately, some intern at Universal Pictures googled Pecky Rhinosaurus images one day and did not realize that this hole came from an injury, and as a result, we got that airhead of a Ceratopsian in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I think I like Scowler's design even more though, simply because he has more vibrant colors. Yeah, I kinda realize when you compare Patchy to the other adult males we see in this movie, he looks almost androgynous. Can't wait till Tumblr finds out about this. I'm not your buddy. I'm the leader of the herd now. Show some respect. But, uh... Patchy. How was I supposed to know? Juniper, where are you going? You know he totally fucked her after this, right? Establishing dominance and all that. Scowler leads the herd over a frozen lake, but when Patchy realizes what a stupid idea that is, he leads them back to the shore. This is all the motivation Scowler needs to challenge him. But hey, I am not complaining if it means you finally get to see the two brothers fighting. You can have the herd, but you're not taking Juniper. Yeah, the herd which you almost got killed? You can have them, I don't care about them. The fight between Patchy and Scowler is the best part of the entire movie. The dust lighting is beautiful, the slow motion makes you feel the impact of these massive dinosaurs colliding with each other, and the most important part of all is during the fight they shut the fuck up. Scowler absolutely obliterates Patchy and then leaves him behind for the scavengers. Patchy, get up! Now, this is where I belong. Oh, Alex. What an idiot I was. They're gonna have a dinner party, and I'm telling you, you are the main course. Good. No, Patchy, don't let this happen. Come on. Just get it over with. Get me out of my misery. And that was Walking with Dinosaurs 3D. Way too childish at the beginning, but I like how dark they went at the end. No, of course Patchy gets back up because he realizes he doesn't want to die a virgin. Patchy, you're okay! I was afraid I was never going to see you again! Well, don't worry, you'll be seeing plenty more of me because there's something I want to tell you. Really? I'm just gonna say it. I have developed a scat fetish. 
Now we get a final showdown with the Gorgosaurs. I'm gonna give you some air support. Everybody look to the skies. Help is on the way. Hold on, bug break. An army marches on his stomach, you know. Patchy's brother is eaten alive in the background, but sure, put a joke here. Oh yeah, this is the perfect moment for a flashback. Because the audience of this movie can't remember what happened an hour ago. And I bet the audience of this YouTube video didn't realize I just reused a recording from my Speckles review. Because I can be just as lazy and predictable as this movie. And when I say lazy, I mean they just copied the ending of Disney's dinosaur where the entire herd turns against the predator. Except there's no blood at all because this movie wants to remind me even more of Dino Time and Speckles the Tarbosaurus. There aren't even any deaths on either side. To make this as kid friendly as possible. Except maybe the part where Patchy breaks Gorgon's arm with the hole in his will. That was pretty awesome. Alright, I forgot this entire story we witnessed was completely fabricated based on a shed tooth. Shouldn't this whole story have been from Gorgon's point of view then? But evidence of the day that a Gorgosaur's mouth ran into a Pachyrannosaur's head still exists. Basing an entire epic dinosaur fight on just one isolated tooth sounds like a premise out of Jurassic Fight Club. At least this movie is way better than the actual Jurassic Fight Club episode about Pachyrannosaurus. <coughs> also, dinosaurs replace their teeth all the time, so losing this tooth is completely insignificant. Don't cry about it, you wuss. How could this happen? And just like Disney's dinosaur, their story ends with them having babies. But the movie needs to bookend with the humans. So now I'm wondering, did that boy really just spend an entire hour hallucinating that a crow was talking to him? Come see what we found. Wow, you two are pretty efficient at uncovering an entire Gorgosaurus jaw from the rocks in that short time. That shit takes days, even with a full team. Unless this is supposed to be an already established fossil site, in which case, why is it not marked, or protected, or secured by other paleontologists? Well, at least the movie is now finally over, but the credits are just artworks by Louis Ray from Tom Holt's Dinosaur Encyclopedia. No concept art of the movie itself, just completely unrelated dinosaur images. Come on, I would have loved to see the concept art for all the distinct Pachyrhinosaurus designs. And they spelled Mark Witten's name wrong. Tells you how much they cared about the dinosaur science in this dinosaur movie. And that was Walking with Dinosaurs 3D. And I know this movie has its fans. And I can totally understand if you love the dinosaurs and the animation and the story. However, when you know what this could have been, wouldn't you agree that the end result is a big disappointment? If we're just gonna chit chat, I'm gonna get a snack. Later, they actually created a Cretaceous cut that removes all the voice acting. That should fix the movie, right? Good guess, but actually no. The problem is that apart from excluding the human actors, the movie cut is 100% the same. That means all those pauses where the dinosaur names pop up on screen are still there, now with complete silence. Even the stupid rewind scene is still included. How lazy can you be to not even edit out the scenes that were specifically made for the voiceover? Is it too much for me to ask that the editors put in just that tiny bit more effort? So, as well intentioned as this Cretaceous cut is, unfortunately it is too little, too late. But I might still recommend it just so you can marvel at the hard work that went into animating these dinosaurs. In another attempt to salvage this movie, there's also a version titled Prehistoric Planet, which is narrated by Benedict Cumberbatch. I hope at least that one cut out all the dumb editing. Like what is he supposed to say during the scene where they play back the footage? Romamu, I've come to bargain. This version actually refers to the Gorgosaurus as Nanooksaurus. But come on, since Nanooksaurus looked different from Gorgosaurus and this model's appearance is clearly based on Gorgosaurus, I think you should stick with the name Gorgosaurus even if that name's outdated. It would be like calling the Carcharodontosaurus from Dinosaur Planet a different name. Sure, we now know that the South American fossils these were based on belong to a completely different theropod, but the model's appearance was based on Carcharodontosaurus, so I would stick with that name. Anyway, at this point I'm just rambling, so it's time to end this review. At least we'll always have the original Walking with Dinosaurs documentary. And this movie will always serve as a grim reminder how a great premise can be ruined by Hollywood executives. 
Hey, what's going on up there? That's but hey, can't wait for 2023 when we get Walking with Dinosaurs the movie 2, The Lost Islands, where Patchy fights Thanos and we meet his heart. This is a real fan page, by the way. But for me, I am now finished. Next year, I'll be busy with my master's thesis, so it'll be months before I make another video. I'll finally rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. At least until another crossover with the Natural History Central podcast. Or another re-upload. Or if I maybe find some free time for a video. No one's ever re- She likes me! And she likes my hole!